last time we looked at the uh, the memory layout of uh, 6502 with the pages and we took a quick look at the registers the accumulator the x and y register the program counter status register and the stack pointer <coughs> what i thought we'd look at next because this is what i kind of refreshed myself on was the instruction set um but one of the things i was asked um when i was demonstrating this sunday is how does a cpu determine what's an instruction and what's data so i thought i'd do a quick run through and, and sort of put a practical demonstration as to um as to how that works so this with the 6502 being an 8-bit computer um and an older one at that an 8-bit cpu it, it it is uh there's a lot of resources out there on the internet and this is one of the sites that i used as well as the um the 6502 uh, reference manual which is really useful but i quite like this site because this site's laid out to the point where you can sort of get information straight away um, on the instruction and then when you click on it you can sort of go straight to that instruction um, or just below the instructions here there's a complete sort of linkable table of reference to give you a, a brief overview of what the instruction is and what we're actually looking at here is a human readable version of what those instructions are so for example if we take um, any of these instructions this one here BBC okay it says branch on overflow clear and that is what's called a mnemonic uh, and basically a mnemonic is just a human readable sort of shorthand representation of what the instruction actually is and what the instruction actually is is a hexadecimal code and we can see that dollar fifty there but we can interpret that from the table five zero and if we do the same over here we can see that that's a seven five and we get the seven from the row and the five from the column so you can do that with any of them so if you wanted to know what um what i'd say row a and uh, column nine that will give you the lda immediately i'm not going to worry too much about the addressing modes at the moment because we will get into that much later on um, but this is a very useful sort of table so basically all the instructions all the programming instructions that you see here um, are actually in real terms as far as the CPU is concerned they're hexadecimal values so what I did was put a little table um, set of tables together to sort of demonstrate this and we can sort of work through how you know we can hand assemble this and then work how the um, the CPU would interpret that so we've got an LDA now notice the little hash or the dollar uh, the pound sign if you like the hash and the um, the dollar sign itself so what we've got there is LDA with some value EA and we've got two symbols and you're thinking right okay well, what are they so within this table here we can come down and we can see that we've got an, uh, a reference to LDA now what comes obvious is that there's the only one of the assembler instructions that has that hash pound sign so that tells me that the LDA must be an immediate but what is the dollar sign well in 6502 the dollar sign represents a hexadecimal value so all you're really saying in that particular instance is load an immediate value with this hexadecimal uh, uh, load this hexadecimal immediate value into the accumulator so the LDA instruction says load the accumulator with it says memory but it means a value from memory or, or an immediate value um, so we can see that the opcode is A9 we can see that it, in total the instruction is two bytes long so that's one byte for the opcode and one byte for the operand um, and so what we can see there is that in total we are expecting to see two bytes going in on oh, this is the status register that is affected um, and in th this particular case it can only affect either the zero flag or the negative flag um, it doesn't affect any of the other any of the other flags but we're not bothered about that just now we'll just come on to this we just need to remember that a9 is what the 
instruction is. So if we say we're going to start assembling from location 2, then we know that A9 is what goes in. And what goes in after it is the hex value of EA. <coughs> so what we've just done is hand assembled the value of load the accumulator with the immediate value of EA. And that's precisely what that instruction says to the CPU. Then we've got CMP. Now notice there's no uh, hash or, or pound symbol there. We've only got the dollar sign denoting that this value here is hexadecimal. So what does that actually mean? So CMP with 0E. So if we look that up, <coughs> where are you? There we go. So CMP. Hmm. Okay. So what is it? Is it an immediate value? No, it's not because it doesn't have that hash symbol. Is it zero page? Well, that's possible because zero page is two bytes. Okay. Is it zero page with any of these offsets? And the answer is no, it isn't. And the reason it isn't is because the um, X register uh, isn't mentioned or the Y register isn't mentioned in, in our in our code, there's no comma x there or comma y, okay? And because it's only two bytes long, because there's only one byte here, and obviously one byte here, so it's two bytes long in total, okay? It can't be any of these, right? And it can't be any of them either, because there's no x and y. So the only one that it can be is that one. So C5 is the opcode for, uh, for this. So what we would say there is C5. And what are we loading into it? We're loading 0E. Right? And then what we're saying is store STA. So we're using the STA instruction with uh, hex 11 or hex 11. So let's go find um, the STA. And what this says is store the accumulator into memory. And again, it's two bytes long. Again, it's a hex value. And again, it's just zero page because it's the only it's the only one that it can be because we haven't referenced the X or the Y register in the um, uh, in the assembler code. So the opcode is eight five. And the value is one one. So if we set the program counter to zero 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 two, the next instruction that it will next thing it will do is it will try and execute that as an instruction. So A nine. And it will it will go through this and it will say, right, A nine is an LDA immediate, so I'll take this EA and I'll copy it into the accumulator. Right, I'll then want to compare it because we know that C5 is a compare with whatever is in the address of 0e. Well, there's nothing in 0e, so I'll tell you what, let's put something in 0e. So we'll put 93 in 0e. So it says, does EA match 93? The answer is no. So it will set the various status registers again. We'll, I went through that a little later on. Um, and it will set the status register accordingly. And then it will move on and it will say, I'll tell you what I need to do now, is I need to store whatever's in the accumulator, because SDA says store the accumulator into uh, hex 11 or hex 11. So I need to put EA into there. And as it happens, we haven't got anything. In reality, we should have a, a, a termination condition at the end of there. Um, we, we, we don't have that um, so our program will continue forever but in real terms you probably should put um, a return from subroutine or something at the end of there we'll not we'll not bother with that for the time being but there should be some sort of termination condition um, in location 08 okay what happens though if you start the program running from position 3 well 
the CPU will load this as an instruction. So I'll say I'll take EA, okay, and I will load EA as an instruction. But where the heck is EA? So if we go up here and we go back to our table and we look up EA, so there's E and there's A, and that's NOP or no operation. So if we click on that and we go to no operation, basically it doesn't do anything, but it takes two clock cycles not to do anything and it doesn't affect any flags and so on and so forth. And you may be thinking, well, what's the point of that instruction? But there is a point to it and you can use it for all sorts of, uh, of things, um, you know, later on, but it doesn't make any difference. The thing is, it doesn't do anything. And what that basically means is there could be any value in the accumulator because we don't know what's in there. We've not checked it. We've not set it. We've not done anything. So it could, by default, have 93 in it. <coughs> so that is it look has it NOP instruction. I say look has it as, as it happens. The NOP instruction is one byte. So what that then means is it only uses one byte. So the very next thing that it does is it goes straight back onto that compare instruction. And that compare instruction will do exactly the same thing. It will compare what's in the accumulator with what's in 0E. But this time they match because we didn't set the accumulator and just so happens that that value that was last in the accumulator was 93. So the status register flags get set differently. Okay, so the zero flag gets set and so on and so forth. So the program has, off, has, has now decided um, to do something different because we started it at a different place. Same code, same, same, same hex numbers, same everything. We just started it at a different place, but we've got a completely different result. So <coughs> what happens then if we, if we start it? at location zero five well we can do exactly the same thing can't we we can we can go back up to here and we can have a look and say okay so we started at zero five and zero five has the hex value of zero e so on here we can say there's zero there's e ah right mm. so what we're doing now is something called asl or ooh, shift left one bit right oh no dear right so we're shifting left one bit but what are we shifting left well let's see e zero e which is what we're interpreting is this one right and it's an absolute and the absolute is three bytes long that means it's one byte for the instruction and two bytes for the operand which means that 8, 5 and 1, 1 are interpreted as an address and because it's little endian the actual address it interprets is 1185 now we've no idea what is an address 1185 we've no idea what, what 1185 is being used for we don't know but what we do know is after that operation is completed Whatever's in there is now been divided by uh, is now been multiplied by two because you've shifted it left by one bit and when you shift left by one bit you multiply by two. So the val <laughs> the value that you have just that you have just manipulated is way outside of the bounds of your code, um, but it's still been manipulated by your code because you've decided to start your program at the wrong place. So what that demonstrates, and hopefully it demonstrates anyway, um, is that the 6502 actually doesn't really care, um, make, doesn't make any differentiation at all between what is data and what is code. It's where the program counter points to that makes that difference. So you as the person have to be a little bit um, careful how you start your and execute your code or you know on which routines jump to where and, and how it's interpreted because the CPU will just interpret those hex values how it finds them 
and as we've just demonstrated that may or may not prove to produce the correct results